Okay, everybody. Hi, it's Yves Langlais, and I'm here uh, to read an excerpt from Michelle M. Pillow called The Savage King, Lords of the Var, book one. Um, super hot cover. Come on, let's, I mean, seriously? <laughs> kind of jealous right now. All right, she's one of the epic authors doing the Fall Into Savings event uh, with me and seven other people who are totally wicked. We've got some 99 cents books for the month of September only, so be sure to go grab them while they're on sale. And now for your exciting excerpt. Carol watched the door to his bedroom open. He'd been sitting in the dark, trying to relieve the stress headache that had built behind his eyes for the last week. The pain started at the base of his skull and radiated up to his temples until he could hardly see straight. A heavy responsibility had been thrust on his shoulders, a responsibility he really hadn't prepared himself for, the welfare of the Var people. King Ator had not left him in a good position. He'd rallied the people to the brink of war, convinced them that the dreg were their enemy, and even went so far as to attack the drag royal family. Carol wanted to see peace in the land. However, he knew the facts didn't bode well for it. The drag had a long list of grievances against King Ator and the Var Kingdom. Carol had known since birth that the day would come when he'd be expected to step up and lead the Var as their new king. He just hadn't expected it to be for another hundred years or so. His father had been a hard man, whom he foolishly believed was invincible. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. His lovely house guest whisper drew his complete attention from his heavy thoughts. Yelissa bent over like she expected him to answer to the insulting call. He dropped his fingers from his temple into his lap, and a quizzical smile came to his lips. He wasn't sure if he was angered or amused by her words. Are you in here, you little furball, she said a little louder. She wore his clothes. Never had the outfit looked sexier. Technically, by Var law, she belonged to him until he chose to release her. For an insane moment, he thought about keeping her as a lover. He knew he wouldn't, but the thought was entertaining. Hum, maybe I'm looking too high. I'm sure there has to be a little cat door here somewhere. Come here, little kitty, where are you hiding? His slight smile fell at her words. It was easy to detect her mocking tone. Where's your little kitty door, huh? Lissa whispered to herself, her blue gaze searching around in the dark. Carol grimaced in further displeasure. He watched her open the door to his weapons cabinet. Her eyes rounded, and he thought she might take one. She didn't. Instead, she nodded in appreciation before closing the door and continuing her search for an exit. A couple of little kitty cats don't scare me. If this insolent woman wanted to play tough, oh, he'd play. Curling gracefully forward, Carol shifted before his hands even touched the ground. He let one thick paw land silently on the floor followed by a second. Short black fur rippled over his body, over his tan flesh, sorry, blending him into the shadows. His clothes fell from his body, and he lowered his head as he crept forward. A low sigh, sound of warning started in the back of his throat. Ooh, now that's got some promise. Be sure to grab your copy of The Savage King with the hot cover by Michelle M. Pillow while the sale lasts.